Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. I've been having a look over the last few days at a bunch of different tech trees that people keep making and proposing. Most of them unfortunately not having a lot of information in them, a lot of them having a lot of spelling mistakes, and also a lot of them far reaching as many vehicles as they can find. And the idea is, is they want their specific nations represented in the game in a large way, because they're from those nations. And uh, or they, you know, have ties to those nations in some way, whether they uh, moved from those nations or whether their family is from those nations or whatever it is when it comes down to it. And every time I look at these tech trees, it just reminds me that when having a look um, at uh, just the tech trees we already have in game, we already have a ton of stuff that the vast majority of people don't play. Why are we adding more into it? The addition of Israel has meant that a lot of people have got this idea that anything is possible now when it comes to different tech trees. And unfortunately, that probably is the case. The addition of the Kronstadt, as well as a vehicle, has given people carte blanche to add in as many fake vehicles as they feel like, because the Kronstadt is essentially a fake vehicle. The uh, third thing that also happened is the Swedish helicopters, where they have helicopters in their tree, which they only tested for a week. So now what we have is what I'll call the three horsemen of the apocalypse. And I've talked about this for many years. And uh, once these things started coming in, once these uh, nations which didn't have full tech trees came in, once these nations started getting uh, fake vehicles to try and balance them out, and once uh, nations started getting vehicles which they'd either tested for a week or hadn't used in ages, such as stuff like the Japanese M47, for example, that never really entered service, it was just tested, or once again the MI24 for Sweden, which was only tested by them. Every person who has ever had an idea of wanting to put a tech tree into a game is going to come out of the woodwork again and throw their ideas into the wind. And unfortunately, as a person who plays a lot of War Thunder, looking at these tech trees, they all look absolutely abhorrent to play. And the problem with uh, adding Israel, and also now they're adding in a ton of Magax to it, uh, to try and give you full lineups, even though they're not addressing the CAS issue yet um, at lower BRs. Hopefully they do at some point. Um, but the, the main problem with them adding this nation is now it has let the lunatics out of the asylum. And when you have a look at a lot of nations, when you have a look at Japan, for example, or when you have a look at Israel, for example, one of the things that you see at the end of the tech tree is to try and get people to play the whole of the tech tree and why they're independent nations is so people can get to something unique at the top. But because of the fact that we live in a time where everybody wants their individual nation into the game, no matter how many similar vehicles they would have from other nations, or no matter how many of them it would be better to break into, uh, like event vehicles and also premium vehicles for other ones, what is happening now is you don't have that end of the line kind of fun tech tree thing. Some of the more recent examples I've seen, there's a Brazilian subtree which is going around today, well at least it was a subtree, there was a South American uh, tech tree which was proposed, which was an absolutely horrific tech tree. When you have a look at it, it would have been terrible to play. It would have been awful because you didn't have any lineups. And for some reason, these guys always put BRs on their vehicles and they're always completely wrong and all over the place. It's absolutely despicable to look at how these guys think when it turns uh, when it comes to balance. There was, of course, the United Korean tech tree, which was added uh, when, or at least, sorry, it was past the developers, so you can enjoy playing, I think it was nine M48s and, uh, in the row. Uh, but, but don't worry, you can just play Israel and we're getting that anyway. So you can just play that and enjoy your absolutely terrible, um, boring lineups until you get to the Macavas. But the one thing that is key about all of the tech trees when it comes to War Thunder right now is they have something at the end of them that people want to play. Whether it's the Israelis with the Macavas, whether it's the Japanese with the Type 90 and the Type 10, whether it's the French with the Leclercs, 
or whether it's uh, the Mirage 2000, for example, or whether it's stuff like the F4EJ, or whether it's the Kafia when it came out for Israel. There is always a hook uh, to the tech tree. And when you have a look at a lot of these proposed tech trees, that doesn't exist. Because the vast majority of these nations which are being proposed, such as the idea of the United uh, South America tech tree, the top tier is literally a Leopard 2A4, and that's pretty much it. There'll be some T-72s in there as well. But guess what? That's not a hook. That's not unique, and therefore people aren't going to play through it. They're not going to play through a bunch of vehicles they've already played in other tech trees in worse lineups to get to that hook. Think about Sweden, right? Think about Sweden as a nation in game. The aviation has the Vigan right now on top of it. So it's something to grind towards. It's not probably the best, but at least it's unique. Then you know you've got the Gripen coming. When it comes to the army side of things, they always had a really nice top tier to grind to. The STRV-122s are really good. They had the light tanks with the 40mm autoloaders on them. They had the Bill when it first came out, which was one of the first top-down missiles in the game. They had these really cool and funky AA systems that you could add. Sweden, as a top-tier lineup, is incredibly good, and it's really fun to play. So that was the hook to get through the gaff, which was rank 1, 2, and 3, which didn't have lineups, only, uh, and rank 1 and 2 massively needed its APDS to be useful, so you were useless half the time playing them. And for rank 3, even though you've got a decent collection of vehicles, there aren't any lineups there. Now, when you look at the Swedish tree now, uh, after, you know, maybe a year or two, now it's a little bit better, but there's still massive holes in it. And when you have a look at these United tech trees, or when you have a look at these proposals for these minor nation tech trees, what you end up having is a ton of holes in them. You have no lineups across the board. You maybe have one, and that's about it. And also, there is no room for expansion. So what ends up happening is you'll just have a horrific experience all the way through. And I know that there is a lot of people out there who want to see their vehicles represented in the game. Luckily, we have events. Luckily, we have battle passes. Luckily, we have premiums. And luckily, we have even the uh, Legends event, which we saw with the IS-2 that they did earlier this year. They could do many more of those types of events to put in these vehicles. Why not put the fun vehicles that you want to play from your nations into tech trees where they will be actually useful instead of these horrific Frankenstein tech trees that nobody's going to play apart from two people. Israel has just come into the game and it is the least played nation, probably because of the fact that uh, probably because of the fact that it has issues uh, when it comes to its lineups and also the fact that you have to play another tech tree to get access to it. But do you know what was the nation and still is the nation which is the second least played and was the least played before? Italy. And that's because its lineup at top tier is rubbish, which is why they've been trying to, which why it's tr they've been trying to help it out for the longest time, adding a ton of stuff to its high tier to try and make it useful. It's not a coincidence at all that they've been pumping stuff into that tree to try and make it better. And guess what? It hasn't worked. It's still boring to play, and it's still rough to play at a lot of areas. I don't want a bunch of other tech trees like that. I want to take those vehicles, which were interesting from those nations, and add them to the, the ones that uh, we already have. There is no more need for independent tech trees. Israel should be the final nail in the coffin for this idea. And if Israel is not the final nail in the coffin for this idea, then people are just nuts, and there is no point in talking about this idea anymore. Because I've, I've played all of these nations. Right now, at this moment, I've researched every single ground vehicle in, in the game. In aviation, I've researched all of them, apart from three for Sweden, right? I've played all of these vehicles, and there is a drastic difference in playing certain lineups compared to others, and that is not going to be addressed. It's not going to happen, and if you keep adding more and more of these independent nations, then it's going to keep getting worse. It's really rough right now when it comes to certain nations at certain BRs. You have one vehicle that you can use, and everything else is substandard. I don't want 
to have to go through that stuff again. And because of the fact that you're adding more and more and more and more and more and more of these nations, less people are going to play them because they're going to be stuck playing other stuff. It is completely pointless at the end of the day to do. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Nicholas Richardson, Elove Goat, Pyman675, Winter Scientist, Merciless Reaper, Jerry Prevolt, Mega Dino King, Orange Tail, Teddy, John Ryman, Universe, Ambrosius McClellan, Daniel Stanton, Moxie, B. Young, Uncle Bean, Sem Arslan, Derek R., Bereen, Lafouche, and Samuel Slick for supporting the channel.